Hello guys and good morning, I don't know about you but it's morning here and I'm having my morning cup of coffee before I go to work so I thought uh, let's be a bit more productive and do a commentary video or two for my YouTube channel. Uh, here I will show you another early period battle as I promised and again I'm, sh I'm gonna show you the, the Turks. Uh, this time it's a Turks versus Mongols battles, a promising one and it's gonna be fun, I promise you that. And I'm using more or less um, the same, or it's not the same, it's a very similar army build to the one I used in my previous uh, early age battle with the Turks. Here you can see my two horse archer units, these are Turkomans, so I'm not bringing any Sipahis along this time because it's a 6-2 battle, meaning I can bring, bring 6 calves out of which 2 can be horse archers. I have to finish off my cavalry component two of these guys, these light uh, cavalry Alan, Alans, uh, or Alan light cast. I love these guys, actually really good stats, uh, fast moving, they can catch up with enemy horse archers, they can harass the enemy, and they can hold their ground in melee, so a really good unit. Uh, these guys over here, uh, I brought just in case, they probably look like, like Norman Knights, but they're not. They are the Armenian Calf, which is the single heavy calf unit uh, of my army. Oh, yeah, and the enemy and my uh, general's bodyguard, of course. You can count them as the second uh, heavy calf component of my army. Uh, the the infantry I brought along is the same as as in my previous battle. I have four spear militias, not much of a backbone, but. They are backed by three units of these Afghan javelin men, uh, great uh, javelin throwers, and three units of Nafatun. So, uh, and four units, of course, of uh, Turkish archers with the long range. So, uh, when I saw it, I'm, uh, I was going to face the Mongols, uh, I thought I was going to face a very similar army to mine, and I did in some aspects. For example, these Mongol infantry, these are very versatile, they can be used as archers, and, and uh, both as archers and, and infantry. Uh, or, for example, these Nafatuns, uh, which, uh, my, which my enemy also deploys, just as, just as well as me. And he deploys uh, four of them, he deployed four of them in this battle, so I know I have to, to be careful of, uh, with those guys, I know very well uh, how effective they can be. And these dis dismounted Mongol light lancers also not much of an improvement, but not much of an improvement to my spear militias. But uh, the aspect that uh, my opponent uh, decided to, to go uh, well against the flow, let's say, in the army choose in his army choosing is in, his, in, in the units that he chose is the cavalry component. Um, why he decided to go against the flow and not bring any horse archers to a horse archer heavy faction like the Mongols, I don't know. But he decided to go definitely for under attack. Uh, um, we must act now. Let's say a Western European uh, uh, style army, a more Westernized army, and he brought two of these Mongol light lancers, which you can count as light or medium calf, and four of these Khwarezmian calf, which are definitely heavy calf. So those guys are used for charging. I don't know if they have better stats than my Armenian calf. I'm not sure, but anyway, he's got four of them, so he's got enough material to work with. Uh, so those guys are used for charging, and I'm not gonna face as a, that much of a similar army build in the in the calf compartment. You no, know, th these guys are these guys are chargers. They're not uh, guys to harass the enemy, to harass my, my line. Uh, and here I made a mistake. I thought I didn't know if, uh, whether his uh, whether his light uh, whether his uh, Mongols uh, Mongol archers Mongol infantry have long range, and they did. So look at that. While I was maneuvering my guys, I lost a hefty number of, of uh, Turkoman forces. Yeah, and no matter. They will have an impact on the battle later. But uh, yeah, I didn't. I shouldn't have done that. I should have been more careful. Now, as I said, it's a westernized, uh, a western uh, European style army, and he's gonna use it like that. He's going to try to frontally charge my Turkish archers, and of course, I'm not gonna sit idly. I'm moving up my spear militias to meet his uh, his initial charge, and he's charging my was it my right over there, and I'm counter charging, of course. And on the left, I'm not gonna directly counter charge with uh, my cat. No, I'm gonna bring my Mongol, uh, my uh, 
Alan Lightcaps, and I am going to try to envelop and circle them. And because my guys are very fast, the Alan Lightcap, they're gonna catch up, and I'm gonna get the, the, this unit of Corazon Run Cup. So the, the point of this was, um, and uh, when I saw him charging, I wanted to, I, I knew he's gonna get something, he's gonna charge at something, but I wanted him to uh, regret his decision. I wanted to make him pay dearly with the lives of his uh, men for charging my line. And uh, I did make a small mistake here. I underestimated the range of the Nafatuns, and you're gonna see there, I'm gonna come uh, just close enough for them to unleash a couple of, uh, couple of shots at my guys. Um, I should have known that. I should have just stayed a bit further back and not and, and not have um, chased these guys so close to to his line. Yeah, there you, just, there you can see the bombs are away. Yeah, and now I'm gonna move my guys. I'm gonna move my guys to the side. Oh, and what happened in this battle, which I really hate when, when it happens? You know, you move your army by pressing the Alt key, and it uh, so it. Uh, keeps formation well sometimes it freaks out on me and it just doesn't work so when I, even though I have pressed the L button my army just randomly I don't know just randomly positions itself uh, where I click so in, in those uh, when, the, when that happens I have to hold movement and I have to manually move them I don't know why it happened but, but it does anyway I positioned my guys here and because I saw the the threat of his Nafatnus, I decided to charge his rear and to get rid at least of one of uh, his Nafatnus units over here and I also charged his Khorezmian Kav, uh, his decimated Khorezmian Kav unit from this side. Um, I did, I did, uh, he did suffer some casualties but as you can see he will retaliate fiercely here. He did suffer some casualties but I didn't, uh, well I didn't kill off is the fat unit the way I want it, sadly, but at least um, uh, uh, he did suffer some casualties on uh, his, on his, uh, with his Mongol, dismounted Mongol white lancers. Here from the back you can see my Turkomans finally consolidated, or what's left from my Turkomans finally consolidated, and I'm starting to harass him from the back while the main battle continues to rage on, uh, on in the front. So I'm moving my lines now. I want to meet him. I don't want. Uh, I won't want, don't want to postpone this uh, anymore. My Turkish archers are still raining. Uh, they are under on attack. Him. We and, need to act. Uh, you can see they're not at full strength. Uh, most of them, two of them, are not at full strength, but they are still a force to be reckoned with. But I think his Mongol infantry is still uh, a bit better than my guys. And here I don't know why, but I'm going to uh, why he moved these compartments. I think he wanted to bombard my guys from Cap over there. But since he moved them, I'm going to engage these guys in melee, and I'm going to move press onward with the rest of my troops, as you as you can see. And of course, I'm going to uh, face uh, to, to to engage the the, uh, the whole of his line with the. Uh, with my uh, Afghan Javelman and Nafatans in the back and went with his Nafatans in the back. I know I can't breed easy because uh, the Nafat because I know what damage the Nafatans can do. I have used them uh, extensively too. So I know I have to be careful. And what's nice about this, this battle, even though my opponent didn't go uh, with, a, with the army build I would, uh, I would have liked to see, What's nice about this battle is that, uh, well, let's say semi-historical, because the Mongols and the Turks did face uh, in, the real, in real life, but in game terms, I think it happened uh, in uh, in the high age, not in the early age, but still, it's, uh, it was it was fun. It was a fun battle. And under attack. And this would we need be, to if act. you ask me, the decisive moment of the battle. He engaged his his whole calf at my line. And as you can see, he did route some of my guys with that, but he let uh, his calf, which was the, the real meat of his army, together probably with the Fatuns, he let his calf be outflanked by my calf. Now, Khwarezmian calf and Mongol, Mongol light lancers are good, but they're just as good as any any unit if you let them be flanked. So uh, he started to lose his uh, calf there, and if uh, and the only thing I had to pay with was um, uh, a spear militia or two units routing, I could. Uh, it was not such a big thing for me. Also, I saw that he was totally into this fight, so I used my 
my two commands to charge his Mongol infantry from the back, routed them as well. So from the, this is the point uh, actually. Only at half which the enemy I force remains. This battle was we starting pray to they lose their way. will to fight. And uh, from this point onwards, I had the impression that I had control over the over the battle, and, and I didn't fear. I didn't fear the outcome. Uh, actually, I was pretty confident that I'm going to win this. Although uh, I still I still feared the Nafaton. I mean, as long as there were Nafaton over there, I, I feared them. And you can see here, mine and these guys uh, just bombing the fuck out of, the, out of each other. So yeah, it was it was intense. Nafatons bombing other Nafatons. You can see, and arrows just raining down on each side, just flying over the heads of the, of the soldiers. So. That's that's uh, that's uh, because the, both of these factions are archer and horse archer heavy factions, so they rely heavily on on uh, archers. So of course, uh, the consequence of that being arrows flying from every side all of the time. As you can see, this uh, this battle is yeah, more or less decided. Um, it goes in my favor. At this point, I have killed a route. It's uh, 77% of my uh, enemies army, 78, and he 48, 49% of my army. Going for his Nafatans now, now, so I can finally uh, clinch this one. Uh, going with my cap, going with everything actually. Uh, what's left for him is a unit of Corisbian cap, with just nine men left. Some, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. That was not a good way to do. Uh, the Nafatuns exchanging fire with my guys, and 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 what's left? Sultan, here? Only half some, our force remains. Some more Nafatuns, some more Nafatuns, and over oh, here maybe something. Yeah, and the unit of uh, Mongol infantry and those guys are not going to hold it out for much longer. Let's face it. Yeah, they're out. And. Yeah, this is more or less the point at which at which my opponent will admit defeat. Uh, anyway, it was a good game to him. Behold our worthless game. foe! Um, See how that general turns tail! Chose, uh, our brave men and have captured the enemy general! Uh, the he on top of the to be a lion, but he seems um, more an ostrich! I would have chosen Let him a different sit and watch how true anyways, lions I mean, fight! It was, it was a viable army, let's say he chose. And he did hit it well, that uh, okay. But in the end, I think the Turkish Turks have um, are just more. Uh, I think they're just more suited for the warfare. They the enemy must curse the day to, they were born. I think if he all went, the poets uh, right of this if most if wondrous triumph. the flow of things, and if if he would have chosen uh, to go with horse archers, it would have been a, a different story. Now, I have no idea why this is a heroic victory. I guess the the game has a mechanism to to to. Uh, to measure the qualitative aspects of the army, so my spear militias didn't count for much. I don't know why this is heroic. I, I had uh, 300 more men deployed than he did. I uh, killed or, or captured 1,000 to 100 men or 200 men uh, of his. He captured killed uh, 800 men of uh, mine. And if we check out the stats, we can see my bodyguard uh, having a nice amount of kills, general bodyguard units, and the rest of the kills being relatively equally spread out among uh, my other units. So guys, I'm gonna go back to my coffee now, I hope you enjoyed the vid and you'll stay around for more vids. Bye bye, take care.